Hi everyone, Spook the Nibu Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new clipping album, Visions of Bodies Being Burned. Titled After a Bar, from the Ghetto Boys song Mind Playing Tricks on Me, which is sampled in the second track of this album, Visions of Bodies Being Burned is essentially the sister record to Clipping's last full-length LP. One year ago, it was dropped, there existed an addiction to to blood, which thematically was a hard turn into horrorcore territory while still maintaining their harsh and creative approach to sound. Now, this horrorcore switch-up also manifested in the embrace of some horror movie soundtrack aesthetics. There were some instrumentals on this thing that had some serious John Carpenter vibes, but the trio also took their sound play to the next level too on some tracks, whether that's on Run For Your Life, where there's all sorts of sound effects indicating that rapper David Diggs is spitting his bars outside, including a moment where a car is driving by, a beat is playing out the window, and that beat just happens to sync up with the rhythm of his rhymes. Then there was also Piano Burning, which was a take on Anil Lockwood's conceptual piano burning performance pieces, and yeah, it's literally audio of a piano burning for 18 minutes. So Jonathan Snipes and William Hudson totally killed it on the sonic end of things here, as they usually do, but let's not also forget here David flexing his talents not just as a rapper but as a narrator on this one because he's telling legitimately hair-raising stories track after track here. So that brings us to Visions of Bodies which for all intents and purposes is pretty much another helping of all of that which I can't stress enough is a good thing. It's actually really impressive the one-two punch that Clipping has assembled here, staying true to their style and their sound while embarking on a new concept which they have kept fresh for two different records a year apart, both of which explore said concept in different ways on different tracks while pushing sonic boundaries from end to end. We have 16 cuts on this thing which include a handful of interludes to space things out. And of course, what's a Clipping album? without an intro so loud and distorted that that sound hits your ears with the crackle of a wildfire. The intro starts with these deep, thunderous, resonant thumps, basically the sound of something frightening approaching. The pounding and the pounding becomes louder and clearer, eventually becoming the rhythmic backing for David's rapping, which sounds like it's coming out of a very small phone speaker, like he's some kind of killer telling you the last thing you're gonna hear before you die. There are some really strange and interesting rhythmic switch-ups in Davi's rhymes, and eventually as he starts to gain up a very fast amount of momentum, he hits you with that, it's clipping. <laughs> Following this is the infectious and groovy Say the Name, that Ghetto Boys loop is absolutely an earworm. The bass line is sick too. I also love how the instrumental generally is so dark, it's so heavy, and yet it's not super busy either. It's simple but effective. David's cold-blooded flows dance on top of these grooves as they develop into something that feels like, I don't know, Nine Inch Nails closer but uh, with a smooth, clubby flair. However, the sound of the song in its beginning stages is a stark contrast from all of the grand, twangy, and metallic instrumentation building up in the final leg that sounds like uh, an industrial take on Persian music. Not entirely sure where that's coming from, but it is an amazing display of sound and quite a cool transition. Lyrically, David borrows a lot of themes from classic slasher flicks, portraying a bunch of young, sexy protagonists getting ready to party, but they're actually just going to be butchered to death, while also tying that into the horror folklore of the Candyman, you say his name five times, which has parallels with Bloody Mary. Pretty classic trope at this point that is incorporated very creatively. We also have 96 Nev Campbell, who is obviously known for playing a major role in the Scream movie franchise, and the song ends up being another groovy, murderous banger that goes into somewhat familiar territory for them. It's not not a conceptual take on a slasher flick per se, though I do think that sound effect of the bang 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 <gasps> worked into the beat is pretty genius. Rather, you can add this song to the steady stream of clipping tracks that feature strong, deadly female characters, the most obvious of which is Body and Blood. In the first leg of the song, David builds up this story of a mean, merciless queen, pretty much setting up guest rappers Cam and China for success as they go to town on the beat with one slick and threatening bar after another 
they also sound completely unfazed by the potential of a deadly killer who would most likely just become their prey anyway. Then with the following something underneath, things become a lot more narrative and a lot less accessible. Bustling, stuttering, disorienting noise becomes the soundtrack to some pretty unnerving bars about a flood of, I think, possessed cannibals rising up very violently out of the earth and consuming basically anything that moves. Make Them Dead sees the trio pushing things into even more abrasive territory as David spits screeds over a wall of harsh distortion, ear-piercing tones. If you're not into noise and power electronics, um, you, you might be kind of departing here, but if you are, it's some legitimately decimating sound design. Regardless though, I do love the track's cultish vocal harmonies and the way the compression on those kick drums really shake the distortion and the drones and the instrumental. Lyrically, David seems to be going into the details of a ritualistic murder. I'm sure the narrative's open to interpretation to some degree, but it's pretty clear that an obsession with tradition and faith leads a a group of people to forming a death cult based on religious rule. Then there's also the very funny and freaky she bad, which when I think of that phrase, what comes to mind is usually someone sexy with unshakable confidence, style, and attitude. But against hair-raising sound effects, deep bass, and twittering electronics, the she that is so bad that David is describing is a murderous ghost that lives in the woods with dust skin and snake eyes and a forked tongue. I'm not even going to tell you what happens to the unassuming group of partiers that saunter into the forest she haunts. Then, Pain Every Day is an absolutely mind-blowing spot on the record for the way it seamlessly brings together intricate IDM rhythms, horrifying sound effects, grand string sections, and a totally unique flow in 7-8 time. And all of it progresses so naturally, it works so well. Check the Lock is another smooth operator with a killer bass line about a protagonist who is incredibly paranoid. He's checking his locks. He's checking under the hood of his car. He's checking his rear view mirror. He's driving through yellow lights. He's suspicious there's something different now about the room that he's in. Clearly a guy who's afraid of being offed by a rival or an enemy. And the way David lyrically dives into that paranoia, it's pretty potent. The following looking like meat though, in my opinion, is one of the weaker moments here. Not for nothing, but I think the beat on this one is a little overbearing. Yeah, I know it's not the only loud production on this record, but between the massively distorted bass, the massively distorted beats, and David's massively distorted vocals, there's not a lot of dynamics to it, not a lot of sonic diversity. In a way, it feels almost like a throwback to a lot of the very abrasive material from their first mixtape, but nowhere near as catchy. Then the atmospheric, eerie, and horror-inspired choruses that glide in very smoothly, feel almost tacked on because they don't complement the distortion all that well. Bringing punk rap duo horror on for a feature definitely adds to the edgy and aggressive tone of the track, but uh, not its dynamics. In terms of ideas, it just feels like one of the thinner songs here, but there's not really a sticky beat or hook to make up for that. Visions of Bodies does have a pretty strong ending, though. Eaten Alive features some uniquely layered rapping that is super simple, but still spine-tingling. The instrumental mainly consists of these scattered percussive sounds and loud metallic tones. Lyrically, David is bringing together hip-hop and horror swamp aesthetics for bar after bar. Big rims, tall grass, uh, missing teeth but the molars are gold, a uh, wish a motherfucker would step up in this swamp, cause I guess after that point the scary swamp people are, are gonna kill ya. The noisy instrumental freakout at the end is a really cool and unexpected change of pace certainly plays into the trio's tradition of celebrating different forms of avant-garde and noise-based music, too. Then we have the very morbid body for the pile, which a lot of you who are Clipping fans may be familiar with at this point. The release of the song goes back to 2016, so nothing entirely new here, but still, it's awesome 
just how much the instrumental and themes of this song play into the already established sounds and ideas of this record, it's just pretty much slipping on like a glove. Plus, given all the anti-police brutality protests as of late, the ideas of this track are more relevant now than ever. Then to top things off with Enlacing, we have another smooth, head-nodding banger with massive bass. Love the haunting and hypnotic pitched vocal samples in the instrumental on this one. Also, David's sung hook, too. Some of the best and most surrealist bars on this and their existed turn up here, while the way the blinds can play that, tattoo stripes across the face that, wait, how are you looking at your face when your face is on your face? This is something you should face. You should fuck this song slap, though. <laughs> the whole thing is like... Uh, having an acid trip during an apocalyptic trap song. And as far as the horror element of this track goes, it's certainly moving into more psychological territory. Then to finish things off like they usually do, Clipping offers their own take on a piece of process music or a performance art piece. This time it's Yoko Ono's secret piece, which is a pretty interesting and perfect way to end this project because not only does it allow them to bring their collaborators back in a really subtle way to just add to the record one more time, but the sounds of birds chirping and dawn, as it were, uh, rising, allows these two horror-themed albums to finish off, I guess, on a somewhat positive note. Uh, things are brighter, next day is here, the creepy things have gone away, and overall, wow. Just wow. One amazing track after another. I think uh, catchier and harder hitting a little bit more than there existed, though both records are fantastic and I think add to each other in a myriad of different ways as an overall experience and, and art piece. Clipping just continues to prove themselves as one of the most groundbreaking, boundary pushing, and creative acts out there in hip hop and modern music in general and uh, just can't wait to hear what they do next. They absolutely killed it on <laughs> this one. <laughs> Feeling a decent two strong nine here. Tran, Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, clipping forever.